All right, guys, so welcome back. Spicy Waffles after a very, very quick round of 16 victory. I mean, the quarterfinals now to face off against Team Illusion. We'll see if they can pull off another quick one or if Team Illusion fare a little bit better. It is going to be an interesting one as the band's already underway. It's going to be Athena, but and removed by Team Illusion. Sylvanas banned by Spicy Waffles, and they're still waiting on their final ban. Yeah, they're going to be waiting for the final band to come through, and it's going to be Thor, by the looks of it, picked up. Sorry, Thor banned away along with the Sylvanas, which does indeed leave that lady on the table, Zyden. It's going to be Neath. Once again, we talked about last game. Good, strong lane pressure that Heartseeker gets off to an early roll, and of course, World Weaver can be interesting for across the map assistance slash kill stealing slash securing from elsewhere. Nevertheless, that's going to be picked up. Maybe AD carry, more likely not going to be stuck someplace else, as over on the other side, we're seeing a bit of a similar pickup from last time. Emir Poseidon going to be the first two lock ins again for Spicy Waffles. Yep, first two lock ins again. Why break what's not broken? Why? why What's the word? Oh my god, why I can't think fix so. what's not broken. Why fix what's not broken? Hey. Thank you, Zyron. Oh my god, I'm being taught by an American. I, see, That's I forget the ability to names, you forget the uh, idioms and That's, all those little I forget the words. I forget words. the words. So, I, I do words also, yeah. so we, we're, we have that in common. Team Illusion, now back over to them for what they want to pick. Will they go for a Guardian this time round? They look for the Geb like the last team did. Or will they head elsewhere? I mean, support what's jungle wise, there is still Sir Cat on the table, which is available. Um, Sir Cat, not too bad against Poseidon, Ymir overall. I mean, beads helps her out plus the mobility is really a big factor that helps too and agony a very safe pick they're actually good luck in that circuit and they're picking up agony along with it because agony's damage is fantastic at all stages of the game and his matchups are not that bad oh are we did we accidentally go into a replay because it looks like spicy waffles are picking up the exact same team comp so far Yep. The Ares getting picked up once again. Flurry Q ran that last game to quite good effect, and I would not be surprised to see Double Hunters coming in for those final two, but we have to get through counter banning phase first. It's going to be Sylvanas taking off the table. Removing that healing means that Ares poke and harass that he's going to be looking to throw out constantly is just going to be sticking because you have no healing coming out of that support. Yep, no healing coming out of that support at all. I'd be interested to see where Team Illusion go with their support now because, like, Geb's available but not good against Ares. Kumbakan is not too bad against Ares and Ymir overall. Um, Bacchus, he could be okay, but he's not got the best of matches because of chains against Ares. I'm, I'd be... I'd, if this pick from um, Spicy Waffles isn't on her here, it's going to be Apollo. I'd really look for an Odin pick if I was Team Illusion. Odin would be my call for the support role because none of these gods have a natural ability to escape the Ring of Death. And that yeah. could really help them out and shut them down on being able to get off like these blink combinations that they're going to be looking for, as well as trap people inside the ring for agony bombs. Yeah, so back and hovered over. That would likely be the solo lane pickup if they block that one in. They have one more available. It comes down to solo lane. As, oh, no, not necessarily the solo lane. They could stick Neath someplace else as well. Agony is more likely not going to be in that mid lane. Solo back, possibly a Hercules could be an interesting one as well, actually, or, or Tyr or Hercules. We have some flip-flopping going around. We're not going to even try to hover over all these things while they're still all over the place. Hercules and Tyr could both be quite interesting. Find one of those hunters and you manage to drag them back towards your team and let them just burst them down. It could work really well, but they're going to go a slightly different route. Go with Fenrir. Getting someone Ragnarok, it, it's often just a case of forcing beads. It, and we saw going back two games. You don't necessarily have that much upfront burst damage, but they have Sir Ked as well, so if they combo up together quite nicely, someone is likely going to die in the back of that. Yep, someone more than likely will die in the back of that, but this combination, a low-key pickup finally for Game Hunter there as well. Very, very safe and to be able to juke around and get away from abilities. One thing that you will know, though, is that Loki can't actually get away from a World Weaver. If he does get hit by it, even if he vanishes, it'll still track him mm -hmm. down and kill him. So, the World Weaver can cause Loki a few issues, but other than that, he's going to be pretty... Okay, just to farm safely under his tower, Game Hunter, especially to like, get as much farm as possible when he's against that. Across the way, like, I like the composition of Team Illusion. Not so sure about the Sobek pick, but I can understand it because of all the other Guardians having issues against the Ares and against the Ymir combo. Sobek with the Lurk in the Wars can get himself out of some really rough situations. Yeah, with that said, guys, we're going to cut to a quick little break. Let the Anti-Ghost Timer tick on down. It's going to be Spicy Waffles to face off against Team Illusion here in just a few minutes. So stick around, tune in for that. We'll be back here in just a few. All right, guys, hello and welcome back. It's time for a quarterfinal matchup. It's once again going to be Spicy Waffles facing up against Team Illusion this time. Production is totally not on the ball today, Hindu. Teams are once again not on the right sides of the screen. Not sure how so, I'm actually now. interested to see what Bushy does this game, because last game we saw him go Devourer's Garden at the start, and this time he's going to go for the Heartseeker Death's Toll. He went for Blue Stone um, Devourer's Garden and switched it all completely this time around. Going to go for the more aggressive sort of matchup, I'm guessing, against this Neath, and I think that's why he's after it, because he's against the Neath in lane. 
uh, this time round and not, I believe it was Medusa last game. So, sorry it wasn't Medusa, it was Rama last game. So I think he's just going to switch up based on the composition he's against, which is interesting. It looks though, by how spicy waffles are stood in this jungle, I'm not sure if they're going to play this super safe or they're actually going to start back harpies as well. I guess they're just scared about the early invasion from the enemy team, which I wouldn't be that scared of when you've got a Ymir and an Ares on your team. And an Episode. Yeah. Other words were placed down the right-hand side of the jungle. We saw the Spicy Wild Sylvain coming out last game. It will be a little bit weaker with Loki. There's no secondary impale into the wall for crowd control at level 1. So the invade potential may not be there. You see they're not. They're starting on speed buff. They're not rushing straight across the map this time. There's mana buff to be invade, however, is still a potential rush. Because, well, they're starting back harpies for Team Illusion on the right-hand side. Yep, they're going to set back RPs first to try and get that ex extra little bit of experience. They've also got a ward place there. So if things do go wrong and they go for an invade after that blue buff, they can just drop their own blue buff and leave it sat there for now and mm -hmm. still not be too far behind on experience, which isn't a bad shout, really. Now that they can see that they're not invading just yet, they're going to try and go for this and pick up their blue, so they will have a small experience lead. Yep, so nothing really gained, nothing lost so far in this matchup. Take a peek over the dual lane where some early aggression may be coming out with that charge prey potential coming out from Zadis Sobek, as well as Ares. With by Flurry gonna be looking to throw out those chains and dish out some early game pressure, but for now at least, the minion wave advancing towards the tower. A little bit of gold gonna be denied by it, but yeah, this early on it's not so the end of the world to lose one or two minions. Well, I mean, it's Neath versus Apollo as well. Apollo's wave clear in the early stage is not as strong as Neath. Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. But you may get to rotate from the back in middle. Not going to find the freeze onto Samsa, though. Instead, gives him a little kiss and makes him whack on his teammate Washy for, Bushy, Wolfie for a second. Washy? Who's Bushy? Bushy? It's Wolfie and Bushy mixed together. Yeah. My words. They're roaming around together. They're, uh, that's actually Wolfie and Ninja Bobat, excuse me. Uh, you know, kind of, uh, I, yeah, I can't think of a name for those two. Nevertheless, uh, yeah, Wolfie and Bushy later on will be looking to kill people for sure. For now, though, everyone's kind of just scattered across the map, looking to farm up and just kind of wait for things to actually get underway. Ninja Bobat's heading towards that left lane, looking for possible gank opportunity. He has not yet walked across the ward. Shackles applied, looking for the roots. It's charge Pride not available. The root, though, from Neath will stop the possible Frost Breath from Bobat. He's going to head back off into the jungle. Yeah, on top of that, Zata played that very well with the Tail Whip to try and avoid the extra chains coming out. He bought him an extra second to be able to use Charge Pride if he needed to to get out of that situation. Two minutes in, though, a little bit of a rotation's coming out from Bobat looking for picks. He's not finding anything yet, and that's one of the ways you kind of stop this Ymir jungle, is to stop the picks, but I spoke too soon. <laughs> he finds one in mid. Yep. Frost Breath can mean disaster for anyone when it does come out. This early on, nobody has beads, really nobody has crowd control immunity either right now. Ninja Bobat going aggressive once again to rescue, not going to find the kill, but delay the back as well. So get a little extra poke and harass, which is never a bad thing. This back here right now does mean Rescue is likely not going to have level 5 and he's definitely not going to have a second bomb online once uh, the Harpy squad in 3 minutes. Well they'll lose a little bit of experience to the tower there as well. Ninja Bobat actually going to base here. He should be back in time for these 3 minute Harpies. He is already level 5 as well so he's not far behind on experience. That mid wave is being wasted to the tower right now. It's uh, trying to catch yourself as much as you can. They do lose 2 creeps from that but he should be able to soak some more. And already look where Wolfie is. He's in position waiting for these mid Harpies. And keep it on the back because he's the potential target here oh without a doubt something you see on supports early on they are so squishy despite being guardians that level scaling for those extra protections is not online as of yet right side harpies team illusion gonna go ahead and take those left side gonna be brought down in pretty quick fashion by ninja bobat and wolfie so nothing really gained nothing lost by either one of these teams for the time being at least a little positioning nearby team illusion possibly thinking about trying to catch somebody out but they're gonna find nobody left at that left side camp Oh, Flo Q actually stayed in lane there as well, so he is level 5 as well. He might catch Sobek on the rotation back to lane here. Not going to go for anything though, just finds out where he is. And he's just continued farming here from Waffles. I think what we'll mainly see in this game, honestly, is up to Bobat to look to make the plays happen with Flo Q. Um, for the most part, Aggression will be in duo lane and wherever Ninja Bobat is, honestly, from Spicy Waffles. Across the way though, same sort of story. Sir Cat and Agni are the two that you'd be looking for the most aggression out of with some help from those World Weavers. Yeah, for now though, they're looking for the aggression but have not yet been able to find it. Part of that can just be pegged down to the lack of wards currently on the map. It's something you typically see early on in the game. There's really just not a lot of gold. People really haven't gone back to base yet for the first time. The support's still just sitting on that starter item and that the regular old hand of the gods. So once they make their first packs, get back to lane, the vision control will start becoming a battle across the map. We may potentially see some little invade potential coming once those buffs respawn, which will be happening here in just a few more seconds. These, these gods, their abilities are all online, ultimates are available. So, some of them, you know, find somebody in the jungle, look for that invade, and look for a fight. Both teams have some pretty scary setup. 
they do have some, a lot of setup for themselves. I feel like Spicy Waffles are the ones with the advantage on the setup, though, <laughs> ever so slightly. Just because the likes of Sobek, he's all about positioning more often than not. He's got a lot of interruption, and that flip can be very useful, but it's hard to combo that. So only some of the best players really manage to get the full combo effect after a charge prey. For so far, Team Illusion not that far behind. The experience in gold lead is favourable to Spicy Waffles, but not something to write home about, not as much as like last game we saw Spicy Waffles in. Nope, Team Illusion definitely faring a little bit better in this one. So first pickup items are online. Heart Seekers, Doom Orbs, another Heart Seeker for Spicy Waffles. On the other side, Heart Seeker for Neath. Other than that, no stacking items coming on quite yet. Rest did go back to base earlier. Picked up Tier 3 Beads. When you're up against an Ares, that is definitely a wise pickup. Left side, some aggression. Side. That is in the waters. There looking for the kill. Across Whoa. the sky. Does come out as well. Fast in the backflip. Zata's trying to chase the kill on Flowey Q under the tower, which is not a good idea. As Bobat does bring down Kirku. And Zata did get the kill on Flowey Q, but I don't think it's worthwhile because guess who's here? Is a boy with his Whirlpools. Yeah, Wolfie, the man of many talents, not only playing the game, but chatting in Twitch simultaneously. So, yeah, doing all the things! Two different people, Zyden. Are they? Are, oh, okay. This makes a lot Two more sense now. Two different people. Uh, he, Zyden, maybe... please. Okay, okay. Yeah. Zyden, please. Okay, two people. <laughs> Nevertheless, this Wolfie does find that kill with that Poseidon. Would that do more online? That's a couple extra stacks for that one. And th that wasn't even with the crack. And Grand Zada took a lot of tower shots. That wasn't needed. But Spicy Waffles, we saw last game, they got rolling very, very quickly. You don't want to see these guys get rolling with a team composition. You know, both teams, like you said, Zata has that set up with the charge prey, but it's not the likes of a Blink Frost Breath. Frost Breath, you have this nice cone of fire in front of you that makes it easy to hit. Charge prey, it's like a straight line type deal. If you don't hit it directly, head on, you're going to miss. Fenrir, Ragnarok is great as well, but you have to get up close and personal to actually get something in your jaws to have it actually be an effective ability. Mid lane, Samsa takes uh, takes a trip back to base on the respawn the back of that Kraken. Finally coming out, Wolfie mid lane now low on health. Casper does use that brutalize to find that kill. Bobat charge device does a little bit of damage across the team, but not enough to secure any of these kills as they're trying to find a route. Neath arrow will not connect. They're gonna go ahead and disengage. Yeah, Bobat was good enough there just to get them out of that little situation. The right hobbies are down, as you said. Left ones are up, and Kirko should spot these and be able to take them down for himself. So a little bit more experience. He won't lose much in the wave tower because of the next wave coming in. So he's gonna come out on top of that one, Flowey Q, realizing it a little bit too late. Yep. So with that, I've said with that a lot of times today. I'm probably gonna say it a lot more, but with that, nevertheless. I was talking about those wards, you can see the vision control starting to be established on the left-hand side of the map, especially by Spicy Waffles. They have wards everywhere, a couple sentry wards placed down as well to make sure Team Illusion have no vision of that Gold Fury. Another pick or two will likely signify Spicy Waffles going in, looking for that Gold Fury, and looking to really start to get themselves snowballing forward in this game. Yep, so follow two for Spicy Waffles. Gold Fury still standing, but vision control very much on favor for Spicy Waffles here. Experience has evened up, though, after those little engages around the mid-harpy camps and the fact that Team Illusion got most of them. Gold ever so slightly in favor of Spicy Waffles, though, and Game Hunter do what he can in this solo lane just to continue stacking up that Heartseeker. It's at 45 stacks already. Yep, just about full. He is hurting for sure with that. That said, he is low kicking up against Fenrir. He could potentially look for the kill. Fenrir does have that steel mail online. He might look for that mystical mail here in a little bit. That will kind of ruin Loki's day a little bit. You get the kind of Loki locator effect. You're vanished. Well, I see the little ticks of damage coming off the mystical mail. And it kind of stops Lo uh, Game Hunter from saying, you know what? I I'm just going to assassinate you, backstab you, and just kill you outright because I'm Loki. I have yeah. my ultimate and I can do that. Yeah, that's one thing that Fenrir really does have with that Mystical Mail. It just gives him that extra little bit of protection, which is going to be important for that main chop. Otherwise, an assassin versus an assassin. He loves for each other and gets the burst. Bow by mid lane, though, did blink freeze and force Samsa to use the beads on Sir Ket. They were rank one, I believe. Nope, they were full beads. Good call to get the full beads a little bit earlier. He will mm -hmm. delay some damage in his build, though, but having full beads against the Emir, not a bad idea. No, not only against the Emir, but also the Loki, the Ares as well. But the problem's going to be. No escape is still online, so that initiation and potential from Flurry Q is potentially going to pull Samson unless you manage to latch onto somebody with that last breath before the pull does come out. Which, you know, in the middle of a team fight and you don't want to get pulled in towards him, latching onto the nearest person may not be the ideal situation with that last breath. Gold Fury finally getting started up. Zad is nearby, is yep. fully aware of this. He's in the waters, but they're going to force the reset. Spicy feel confident. <clears throat> well, they force the reset with a look in the waters, but he still feels spicy, still want to fight this. Mm -hmm. They force the ultimate out of Zata, which means his engagement potential of stealing this is a little bit more risky, and that wall is going to cause him an issue. Great tail whip from Zata, though. That tail whip was very important to make sure he didn't get hit by the freeze, which could have potentially killed him, especially with Game Hunter being there and that Kraken of Wolfie. But, like I said, they're not going to be scared of doing this now just because of their composition. 
That Gold Fury died so quickly. Zadok's coming in looking for the steal. Did not even have the chance to think about it. Wolfie pulled back, though. Gonna get locked in. Burst down. Drops the Kraken. Actually still alive. Trying to sneak away. Zadok trying to score the kill. Kirko finds it with the World Weaver. But they are dropping across the board. Spice Waffles looking to clean up. Yeah, no, but they're not the ones really cleaning up because at the moment Team Illusion have done well for themselves as well. It's two to two, but with Bushy using the across the skies with Game Hunter's support to bring down Resu, it does turn round and an extra consolation for them is they'll also get a purple boss steal as well, which just accelerates Spicy Waffles even further. You can see the charts just went bloop in terms of gold and experience in favour of Waffles. The Illusion, though, didn't look too bad in that fight. No. They all chose their targets and Shovely picked them up, but Waffles came out on top. A big part of it was Wolfie's crack, and when that popped up in the middle of that fight, he was just barely able to get it off. It looked like he was barely able to get it off, then he still stuck, he was alive after that. He actually had time to drop down a second Whirlpool in that fight before he finally got cleaned up. But, I mean, Spicy Waffles, that was on the back of Gold Fury. Health bars were not full. Team Illusions were a little bit better off. So the team fight, I guess they went a little bit their favor. You know, they came out three for four, uh, four kills for three, and got that Gold Fury. But like I said, Team Illusions team fight there was not bad at all. The tail end of it, it was, it was basically just down to they had two guys that were pretty much unscathed on the tail end of the fight. And, and yeah, the remaining members of Team Illusion were separated. Pretty much. 8-5 to five, though, are Spicy Waffles now with that Gold Fury lead. They're going to go back and clear up their own jungle. Red buff going to be dropped down here. As you can see, across the way, Caspu is going to be dropping down that blue buff for himself in that solo lane. Solo lane, not really action between them, but they've both been very, very good on the rotations. They've both kept the towers at full HP, which is a credit to both of them. Just Well, mainly to Game on it because of the fact he's against is Loki, and his push power is not the greatest in the early stages of the game. He's not really taking too much poke there. A bit of respect coming out from Caspu on that one. As the rest of Team Illusion group for the red on the left. Yeah, Loki just got that much more scary right now. Titan's Bane just bought out right by Game Hunter. It's going to help a decent bit against some of the physical protections coming out from the Team Illusion Hunt uh, Soul Laner as well as Guardian. Although Zada is solely only sitting on that Iron Mount, but as is Flurikian. We are only 11 minutes 30 seconds in the game. Sovereignty will be online shortly. You can see a little bit of gold discrepancy as well. It may only be a steel mail for Zada when he heads back to the base for the next time. As things stand now, however, a little bit of roaming around. The ward is starting to fall off the map a little bit. Vision not in t as important. It's still important, of course. But left side, there's no gold for you to fight over. Just one or two wards to make sure you know where people are. Mid lane, Bobat looking for the Frost Breath. Not quite Doesn't able to find it. it. Doesn't find it. It does cost him his blink, which will take a little bit of time to come back up again. 90 seconds as it's only rank one. However, I mean, the one thing about that fight for Spicy Waffles that we didn't really mention was the Heartseekers didn't lose any stacks. Flo um, we did mm -hmm. see Wolfie lose a couple of stacks of that Doom Mob, but already he's back to 41. And his damage potential to this team is good. Rest is in trouble. Rest is in big trouble. Beads just forced out. They're not going to be able to look for the full-on command up to disengage because it is only a 3v5. No escape. Flurry Q is going to try to find the pull. He does find Rest. Who pulling back in. Dead. The follow-up from that Kraken was good. Wolfie now getting zoned out. Probably going to fall here in the middle of this left side pit. He will, but Apollo's on his way, and he's actually duking out well enough for Apollo to get there in time and dunk down with the across the skies, only connected with Gurko, Gurko, sorry, and Ninja Boba uses the explosion to deal damage to Zata, that's going to be the focus for now, he is the tankiest target on the team, but he's still going to fall to the wayside, as a bushy finds it so beautiful. Yeah, this could potentially be a tier 1 tower if they want to look for it. They're going to rotate over the right lane, however. Maybe look at the skill away some jungle buffs. They are going to find them already down and out. Back Harpies, they're there, why not? Tier 1 tower, they can save that one for later. So the fights right now, we talk about the team fight setup. Team Illusion are relying on two things, the Ragnarok from Fenrir or the Charge Prey from Sobek. Pretty much everybody on the side of Spicy Waffles has set up Game Hunter 1v1, Caspu right side, but Bobat's on his way. Not going to be in time to save Game Hunter, though. No, he's going to miss the freeze, too, so Caspu should be out of this one. He's not really going to get brought down by Ninja Boba here unless something crazy happens. Even Will Wave has been used to help him disengage, so Caspu will be fine with that one. I think the big key to note here, though, is Samso on the circuit hasn't really had a chance to really get online and be a threat no. just yet. Been forced into full beads, died early on because of it. They're looking to try and pick Boba over here, but they're not going to find him under this tower. And that's one of their biggest threats, was trying to get Sir Ket snowballing going and pick off some of these weaker targets in, in the likes of the Loki, the Poseidon, and this Apollo. But it's just not working out just yet. Nah, it hasn't really had a factor. Taking a look over the damage charts as well. You can see you're sitting down way at the bottom of the charts, just barely hitting four digits worth of damage. Has not been a factor so far this game. It's doing okay farm-wise to just kind of keep pace a little tiny bit behind, however. So as the game continues, Samsung, uh, you know, one good last breath, if the person she dumps it on happens to die, that is going to be a fight changer, but the problem is they have to find a fight where Sir Ket's actually able to get in and set that up. 
I mean, the other thing to note as well is what Spicy Waffles are doing every single fight. They're forcing the whole team into beads, first of all, mm -hmm. and full beads at that. And what happens is you'll see Ninja Bobak go in, look for a freeze, and if he doesn't, if he finds the freeze, it forces beads, and then immediately Flow Q just ults them with the no escape, brings them into the Kraken, and he's GG well played. Samson on the left hand side going to look for a bit of aggression, but immediately Bushy Flow Q disengaged from that one. Walk coverage is good from Team Illusion over on this left hand side right now. They could be looking for a goal fury themselves this time round, but they've got to be careful. I think they they realize they have to go for this and try and make a play happen as Game Hunter is taking that tier one in the right side. Yep, that one will fall. It's going to be a 4v3 right now. It's a couple other members are back to base. Apollo can fly across the skies though and join this fight quite quickly. World Weaver, Wolfie getting burst down quite quickly. That was Ragnarok burned and once again, apparently things are going to act up today, guys. We will be back here in just a minute. All right, guys, I have to apologize. Just seeing Wolfie get just completely burst down like that brought back very, very painful memories of casual games I've played in the past, and I, I just couldn't deal with it for right there. I just had to close the game out entirely. I apologize. It was very unprofessional of me, but we are back now. We see Gold Fury once again started up, and... Oh, no, no, Wolfie, Wolfie, don't be there. Don't, no, no, go away. Wolfie, Wolfie, no! No, not Wolfie again. does go down to the engagement. The bait from Team Illusion works out well, but the fight's still going. As you can see, Ninja Bubba chasing down Samsa. That is a Sir Cat, though, and it's hard to chase a Sir Cat who can just death bane away like she did. But uh, Bushy says, No, not today, you scumbag mobile piece of jungle carnage. And now the fight's still raging over as Bushy finds himself another kill. He's going to trade off with Rasu, who uses the beads there to try and box out the Mez. Kaspu is now there with Zata, realizing that Bushy's the biggest threat here. He gets leapt on by Kaspu, and Game Hunter. Sneaky, sneaky game hunter. He's going to come in around the back. Will he find something is the question. He's going to be looking for it. Looking for Zada. Popping out a lot of damage. Sassanay not yet used. Going to try and find this lockdown under the tower. Going to take a few shots, but find that kill. Resu, did he survive that fight? Or was that a fallen respawn? That might have been a delayed Dia side. No, he, he lived. He lived. He lived. He, lived, okay. he, lived. He, he managed to get out underneath the tower as well, just in time. But that's going to cost Team Illusion the second goal view of the game as Spicy Waffles will take this one single handedly. That whole fight started with Team Illusion getting a really good pick on to Wolfie, but the after effects were not good. The aftershock was just too much as Spicy Waffles collapsed and turned it around. Yeah, the, besides, even the Kraken he dropped on Wolfie was able to actually use it, but it didn't really have a big effect. It wasn't a big grouping. He didn't catch that knockup from it either. But that said, the rest of the team fight from Spicy Waffles is still very, very scary. The Frost Breath's coming out constantly. Bushy just going crazy with the damage already this early on. And then Game Hunter, we saw him come back in around for the cleanup as well, so... It's a rough one. There's so many people on Spicy Waffles, you need to make sure you don't have to deal with in a fight, that even if you manage to pick one off, does Team Illusion have a pretty good pick comp? Just removing one, then leaves, it's like, well, we just spent everything on one guy, we now have nothing to deal with the remainder of Spicy Waffles. Oh, I mean, Spicy Waffles are seeded second after their win last week. Team Illusion seeded in the sixth position so far. And at the moment, the sixth position are having a bit of a rough game against the Spicy Waffles. Based off, like, rankings, you'd expect like to, to be that way. But Team Illusion, they've made a couple of mistakes. They're not completely out of it yet, but things are not starting to look good for them. Maybe if Samson can find this pick on Wolfie here, they could go for it. But it's just going to be a ward and a, a walk away situation. Yeah, we touched on it a little bit before with little technical issues. Samsa really not able to come online so far this game as Sir Cat's not necessarily like an old school Thanatos where you either got going or you didn't. The last breath can still be a pretty big factor in fight, sh shutting down healing coming out from people. And if you get that kill, that poison will spread all over the place doing a decent chunk of true damage. But so far, we haven't seen that come into play as of right now. Some groupings coming on. Tier 1 tower. Bushy able to take that down. Bobak going to force beads off Karko. Backed up under the tier 2 tower. World Weaver charged. Looking for the fight mid. Yeah, look at the Mike mid instead as the no escape does come out from Flurry Q as well, pulling in Casper into the Kraken. He gets evaporated to that game hunter on the backside. He's going to Rasu. Rasu deleted from the assassinate coming out from Game Hunter. Now they're running away, but guess who's in the sky coming in? It is Bushy landing on the head of Zada, finding some damage. Can they lock him down and find this kill? Flurry Q will have those shackles ready and waiting. Not gonna need it. Game Hunter found him around the corner to secure that kill. Samsa still running. They're not gonna catch Samsa. She's, 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 she's gone. <laughs> Bobat though, with the left hand side, gonna catch Kirko a little bit overextended here, forcing out the backflipping game hunter just teleported over to the side of the map when, hey love, how you doing? Boom! Says your man Ninja Bobat secures himself a kill to do, once again, four kills in favor of Spicy Waffles. No DSIs just yet. Yep, they are getting close to it though. Samsa, we saw, if not for that mobility answer cat, it may have been in a bit of a bad situation as well. But Spicy Waffles continue their bit of a reign of terror so far this game. Team Illusion are finding kills, but so far, every time these fights actually go are fully committed to, Spicy Waffles is coming out the victor. And they're building a slow but sure golden experience lead because of it. 
Yeah, they, I mean, they're, they're slowly just building this up time and time again. They're getting themselves in a spot now where they're pretty much established in a very dominant position. It's not as bad as last game for them, for the team, because, of Team Illusion, because like the last game with 22,000 experience behind at 22 minutes in. This time it's only 11k, but still, that's a big margin. And Ninja Boba is locking and hunting constantly with that Medjai. You can actually see Floki just blinked onto Zata. They're looking for the pick on him if they can find it. There's the no escape. That's probably going to force Lurk in the waters, which it, it does. But meanwhile, Sansa... There's a lot of speeds. He is trying to fight Ninja Boba, but not so much as scratching that crusty outer icy shell of that Ymir. Back, back side of the fight, Zada gonna eat a crack and get locked down, caught out, and not able to go anywhere. Well, nin meanwhile, Ninja Boba, shards of ice, finds the kill onto Samsa. Spicy Waffles once again looking to clean up house. Bushy forced back into corner. Casper trying to find this quick answer kill. Can he find it? Unchained will miss. Oh, the, the bomb. bombs coming down. Resu That's a penner. Double. That should be a penner. It could be a penner if Resu can find it. He dashes in. He's looking for the kill onto them as well. But the Royal Escape and Game Hunter goes over the assassinate. Resu is not going to get his penner kill. Instead, he'll fall to the wayside and Kirko will fall alongside him. As a deicide finally happens for Spicy Waffles. If, if Resu had the time there for cooldowns to come back around, that likely would have been that pentakill, but unfortunately he spent the full combo going into those first couple kills. The health bars were just chunked, but unfortunately the rest of the team was already gone. If Resu had been there just a couple seconds earlier, that fight could have gone entirely different, but unfortunately that was just the way that rotation from him worked out. Rough one from Team Illusion because there was a big, big glimmer of hope for them, for, for them there for a moment. I mean, it was a glimmer of hope if he could have actually kept them all in that pit and got the full damage down. But Resu, he was level 17, which is the highest level on his team, but not full build online yet. If maybe if he had that Spear of the Magus, I think he could have potentially picked up that penny. It was a very, very close to being a penny kill. I could have seen that being a potential bomb. Mm -hmm. Didn't have it. Didn't manage to find it for himself. Real shame. Real shame. Yeah. So with that, Spicy Waffles once again come out victorious in a team fight, sitting now up above 10,000 gold in the lead. A little bit of a lull right now. Goldfear is about to come back up. You can see the vision battle starting to branch out across the map because they have to be concerned. You know, if they look for a gold fury, the enemy team looks for gold fury, the other team can just say, you know, we'll just go for the fire giant straight away. So as the gold fury finally sweeps her way down into her little nest as she sets root to guard her little treasure trove of gold coins. We'll see what spicy waffles look to do next. You can sell. It's looking like it's going to be a gold fury, and why not? Life seals online for Bushy. There's no, I mean, nothing gained, nothing lost if they have to force that reset. So. That one's going to go buying him time in mid lane. He's buying time in mid lane here. He might go down for it, but he got him gold through. He's level 19 right now. Will Weaver's coming in. Is a four-man army to take on the might of Ninja Boba, and he still stands long enough for a Kraken to come out from Wolfing to try and turn around the damage. But guess who else is here? Flurry Q with that no escape. Yep, going to find a pull into Zada. No escape. Bush, or no escape. Press guys comes in. Bushy's joining the fight. Kirko finds the kill into Wolfie. Bushy asks her straight back onto Zada. A little scattered right now. If they can find the lock into somebody, Bushy has pop sprint. Looking chase. Game Hunter finds Resu. Kirko. Backflip still on cooldown for another seven seconds. Not getting out of that one. Game Hunter finds the double. Kazpu finds an Apollo to play with. Bushy pops beads and gets out free and clear. Tier 2 tower. Not going to be concerned with this. Could potentially be a fire giant rush here, but it looks like Clerky is going to head off in a different direction. They actually, are they going to go there for two men? Just look for some farm. Not many real mistakes from the side of Spicy Waffles this time. Wolfie's died a little bit more than he would have liked to, though, and that Doom Orb's not going to be as useful. But him dying, it doesn't isn't necessarily a bad thing if Game Hunter and Bushy are getting as big as they are on their respectable carries as well. So, the him being the focus target, he is the mage after all. Everybody else is physical. Well, they're not really, let's be honest. He's Humeo and Aries too. But him being the focus target, it does allow the rest of his team time to just pick apart the rest of the team. And Spicy Waffles can start turning their attention to this Fire Giant now yeah. and looking to close this round through game out. Wolfie is the focus target, but look at the damage chart where he's currently sitting. He's sitting just shy of Game Hunter and Bushy's damage. Every time he's getting focused and picked off, he's able to drop the Whirlpool, he's able to drop that Kraken and find a huge chunk of damage before he actually falls. He doesn't get the recharge, he's not able to use those in-hand attacks that Poseidon can make it can benefit quite well because he does get that little spread gun effect with the Strident, but he's still, he's not, it's not a case where he's completely shut down in this game. It's been about 10, 15 minutes, 10 mm -hmm. minutes or so since we looked at the chart. Samsa is still sitting at 2300 damage, just doubling what we saw about 10 minutes ago, not having any effect so far really on this game. I mean, Samsa is trying to do what he can. I've seen a couple of good ultimates coming out from him. He is behind. He's trying to still do what he needs to do in terms of initiate the team fights for his team and set things up, trying to spread mm -hmm. that poison. But the targets he is against now are just so high level that it's yeah. becoming an issue for him. Look at the levels. I mean, Flowey Q is even level 17 here, which is equal level with him. And that means those chains and that searing flesh is wrecking. On top of that, he's still got bolster defenses on him to it too. 
to the side of the jungle ninja boba being slapped up by cast we're not gonna have too much of an effect though he is pretty tanky right now game hunter finds the first kill of this fight is it's a little bit scattered right now but spice wells are not too deterred flurry q able to take that damage quite handily not worried about it at all oh, but around the back the backside He's going to have to jump away. Game one is going to go in the assassinate, find the kill. But the beads were very, very good from Sam, so they're just saving the day. He will pick up Resu as he dashed in with a path of flames to try and escape the onslaught of spicy waffles under the Phoenix. But there's a Kraken, Zata, crocodiles like water, but they don't like ice. That is for sure. Tier 2 mid tower going to be brought down here in very, very quick fashion. Minions are present, they're not going to worry about it. They could potentially look for this Phoenix as well, but Fire Giant is definitely a possibility for these guys. It's only Samsa left standing. We saw a couple times so far, Samsa goes in, tries to start attacking somebody, and is barely scratching the surface of the health bars, especially in the case of Ninja Bobat and Flurry Q. So we'll see if Samsa can find something and really make a, make a play and make a save, but there's no Hand of the Gods available, so it may only be a Force Reset, if that. I mean, Samsa can go in and try and get someone, but Bush is just going to zone him out immediately. And the amount of damage that he can put out is insane right now. It's not worth even trying to trade, especially when he's got some crit online as well. I mean, this is the spicy waffles we saw in Season 1 of the mm -hmm. Challenger Cup. The last season, this is the spicy waffles we saw before we saw them go for those fights for the relegation spots. Before the roll switch, this is the team that was so destructive and gave a beating down to Absalon sometimes too and made it a difficult game for them. This is the spicy waffles I expect to actually potentially make it into the Pro League. If they keep playing the way they do like this, yeah. they could really go far. Oh, absolutely. Uh, still a couple weeks away from that, though. And you know, even if Spice Waffles take this game and keep on going forward, still going to be a battle to see who gets into those group stages and who wins those group stages. So it's still anybody's game at this point in time. If uh, actually Spice Waffles win today first place, they will definitely uh, clinch themselves a, t a group stage spot, if nothing else. So I think uh, even a second or third place finish could potentially lock them in as well going forward for the round robin group stage. So, uh, That's the best thing about the round robin group stage. We'll get to see just the top eight teams play off against each other in group format until the top two from each group will be decided. And then they will face off in a best of five to work out who's going to win the final week of the Challenger Cup. A little mm -hmm. bit of a different format instead of the usual cup format where teams slowly fall to the wayside as they realize they don't have a chance for qualification. Five but anyway, no this escape. game. Not going to find anybody, but that's all the crack jewel immunity burned across the entire team for the most part. Bushy? He, he, he's seen Bushy. the sights. He's on tour. He's Bushy. Like, there he comes. Drake Drop. down onto Zata. Zata is in trouble. Zata is annihilated. Kaspu falls to the side as well. Resu is the next one under threat as the saving flesh and the auto intacts of the finger bangs from Bushy come out to give himself the double kill. They kill the, they get the DSI before the Phoenix even falls down. And that is going to be the game as the five man's grouping of Spicy Waffles with the full on DSI and minions present quickly make short work of that Titan. Once again, a little bit of a slower start to this one. Team Illusion kind of had a better defense early on, but Spicy Waffles found the cracks in their armor and eventually brought it around to a victory. Two games in a row so far. Spicy Waffles, you know, they're up in the front so far in this Challenger Cup. You were just talking about their strength. This is their good showing. They are a team to keep an eye on, especially going forward. I I wouldn't be too surprised if we saw these guys make it to the finals again. I'm not sure who they're up a against. Good here, so. they're, they're probably going to be because Yellow Fishes or, well, Yellow Fishes or Lazy Unicorns. That game could go either way, but Yellow Fish is looking pretty strong right now. Um, and across the way, we've got Silver Elite versus Losing Road going on, which is Sayo's team, along with Baxes on that one against Losing Road, who are an established team who haven't performed as well as we expected them to. Well, at least I didn't this season so far. And then we've also got Pappies versus Six Sigma going up for the other semi final spot. We'll be back, though, guys, with one of those games shortly. We're probably going to do another quarterfinals game mm -hmm. as some of the teams are a little bit delayed and get themselves through some of their longer games.